Welcome back y'all to Searching for Faith. If you're new here, I'm Tracy. And today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I am gonna show you guys how I word map as well as how I do a verse comparison. And I created both of these as a printable for you guys. Um, it will be available in my Etsy shop. Um, the printables are usually really cheap. Like, I can't even remember. Like somewhere between like three and $5. Um, is a downloadable PDF, super easy to print. They're gonna be eight and a half by 11 size, but you can easily print them smaller, like do like a shrink to print, like you know, change the percentage of how much it prints or print two to a page if you have a smaller journal. Um, as y'all know, I am using like an art journal as my journal, Bible study journal, so it's pretty big. But even in this giant Bible study journal, I'm still gonna have to cut it down just a tiny bit. Um, but they are eight and a half by 11 size, so they're the perfect size when printed standard. They're just three hole punch and put in a binder if you use a bind standard binder for your Bible study. Um, but yeah, these will be available on my Etsy shop along with I already have my other Bible study printables. I did videos on how I use these methods, and these are my Bible study methods that I came up with, uh, but these are also available on my Etsy shop, but I will link, give you guys a coupon code below that will be good until the end of October if you would like to get all of my Bible study printables that we have so far. Um, so I will link that below, but yeah, so we're gonna get started. First, we're gonna do word mapping, and then we're gonna do our verse comparison. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I tweaked this a few times. I have previously done word mapping and verse comparison in my Bible study journal. I actually think it was my last Bible study journal, which is the one that I did it more in. Uh, but I wanted to start doing it more. And so I kind of came up with a super simple, easy, um, understandable way <laughs> to fill it out. So for our, let's start with word mapping. So for word mapping today, we are gonna use the word humility. Humility was the, I've been using the Amy Center uh, scripture, I think it's called scripture journaling or prayer scripture journal. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but I've been using her scripture journal printables um, for the last few months. And the month of September was the word humility. So I read lots of verses all about humil humility, prayed about humility. Um, and I've definitely been feeling like that word being like, like put on my heart by God lately. Um, just cause I've had so much going on in my life that I've been feeling very, very anxious about all the different moving parts of my life, including this YouTube channel, which is just one part of the things that I have going on. And I've been, I feel like making it more about me and less about God. And so I just really want to recenter myself. I know recently I felt, and you'll see this when you see my like flip through of my journal later on, but when I was doing my prayer journaling, I think it was for the scripture. Let me see if it was scripture or if it was, was it for September? Yeah, it was. So I felt the verses of the song Be the Center. I don't know if you guys remember the song. I feel like it was, I'm not sure who the original author was of this, like, who wrote the song, but I sang the song at my sister's wedding in like 2003, I think she got married, either 2003 or 2004 is when she got married. Um, but these are the verses to the song, is Jesus be the center, be my source, be my light, Jesus. Jesus be the center, be my hope, be my song, Jesus. Be the fire in my heart, be the wind in these sails, be the reason that I live, be my vision, be my path, be my guide. Um, and so I just felt like this like, pull from God to recenter and refocus and remember that he is the reason for everything that I do. He is the reason that I live. He is the reason that I breathe. He is the reason that I have this YouTube channel, that I have a job, that I, I have purpose. Like he is the reason and I need to like focus. I really have felt that like call for humility on my heart as I've been praying through scriptures on humility during the month of September. So I really wanted to do a uh, Bible verse word map for the word humility. 
pale. I think I got lost my train of thought. So hopefully I remember where I am. I had to like stop filming to take a call. My husband went out to ride his motorcycle and he's stranded. Like it, he stopped to get gas and it won't restart. <laughs> um, and so I had to like take that call. So um, I feel like, you know, t God is outside of time. So like if y'all want to, when you see this video, pray for him, even though whatever happened with it has passed. I feel like that's very a first world problem thing to pray about, but um, just pray that it's not that big of a deal and that it doesn't cost a lot of money. We've got some, like we're going to be moving soon and we're, so we're trying to be careful with our expenses <laughs> right now in life. And so I think that we're both probably like nervous about the cost and things like that. Um, but he recently had it checked out and they said everything was fine. So for this to happen again, obviously something's wrong with it. So I know I'm venting and rambling about my husband's motorcycle, but if y'all want to pray for that situation, I greatly appreciate it. Um, but let's get on to our word mapping. I keep wanting to try to say verse mapping. This is not verse mapping, this is word mapping. We are gonna word map one word from scripture um, and we are going to do the word humility today. So I'm gonna pick a marker. I think I'm gonna use this fun teal blue. So we are just, oh wait, before we do that, let's paste it into my, into my journal. Maybe that's a good place to start. Okay. All right, so I am going to cut it down just a little bit um, so that I have space to tape it in to my Bible study journal. Like I said, y'all can shrink it when you print it so that it fits whatever size journal. If you have more of like an A5 size, which is like half letter size, um, a journal, then uh, just printing like two to a page is is a perfect size for that. And I'm using my Tombow Mono uh, double-sided tape runner. I'll link the things below that I'm using. But yeah, so I'm hoping that this printable is pretty straightforward for you guys. Let me show you before we get started. Oh, I take that in a little crooked. That's okay. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so what you're gonna do is obviously write the word in the center. So we're gonna go ahead and write. I should have started that farther over, but it's okay. All right, humility. Um. And uh, then you're going, we're going to look up what the Hebrew word and the Greek word for humility are and if there's any like meaning differences. Um, then we're going to look up the traditional definition in like, let's say a Webster's dictionary. I'm probably going to use dictionary.com. The biblical definition, which I will probably use my ultimate Bible dictionary to look up the biblical definition. And then we're going to choose a verse that we would like to write that includes that word. And then we are going to write to what that word means to us, like a reflection, a modern day application, that sort of thing. And before we get started, I think I'm going to rewrite this with a standard pen. Um, or maybe a, let's see, so that I can just see it. It just looks like I... Use, oops. All right. All right. So first we're going to look up what the Hebrew and the Greek word for humility are, which I already Googled. All right, so the Greek word for humility is tapinu, tapinu, tapinu. I'm probably saying that totally wrong, y'all, but it's okay. All right, let's use this pink for our Greek word. So we're going to write... I just realized this is a flex one. That's okay. 
So T A P E I N O O. All right, and it means to make low or modest opinion of oneself. Okay? And then maybe I'll use a flex for the Greek as well. We'll do it in this blue. All right, the Hebrew word is avana. So, ah, va, and probably, uh oh, I did that wrong. Avon. Ugh. All right. White out. Where are you, white out? I made a mistake. Would not surprise me ever that I would make a mistake. All right, for some reason, my um, lapens pens don't like writing over. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna use, a, we're just gonna use like a standard pen to write this word. It's anava, A, N, C, for some reason, it's hating me. A N A V A H. Anava. All right, and it means. Hmm, to occupy your God. given space in the world. Um, it is, let's see, fear of the Lord. All right. Um, and it says it leads to wisdom and to honor. All right, I'm just gonna underline Avana. All right, now I'm gonna go to dictionary.com and we're gonna look at the word. Okay, show it to me again. That was weird, it like disappeared on me. I had it pulled up already. All right, so the traditional definition of humility on dictionary.com is the quality of condition or being humble. I'm just gonna write humble here. And then we're gonna write modest opinion, oops, or estimate of one's own importance. Okay. And then we're going to look up the biblical definition in my Bible dictionary. I'll do this one in purple, maybe. All right. Let's see. H I. So, humility. Oh wait, this is my, oops, 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 oops. Let's use this pen. All right, so it is the personal quality of being free
from arrogance and pride and having an accurate estimate of one's worth. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to find a word, a verse using humility. And because I did a whole, like, uh, month on verses on humility, I'm just going to look through my verses and see which one I want to write down. And I think this was the one that, like, convicted me that day. So, I'm going to write this one. All right, I'm going to use... So, do I have the other colors? I have pink. I have... Orange and green. All right, let's do it this color. Okay, so... This is Deuteronomy... 8.23 that he might humble you testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Okay, all right, so, and now I'm going to think about what this verse is, means to me, and uh, like I said, I've been humbled <laughs> by all of this recently, so I think I'm definitely going to think about that and what I want to say. I got my right in pink for this one. Okay. All right, so I kind of went like, <laughs> uh, I don't know why I used like the F, like like I was like writing in like uh, like KJV or something, but I read that I should humble myself before the Almighty God, my Creator who giveth and taketh away. And the point of that is just that like He is our Almighty, glorified Creator who gives us life, that gives us purpose, that like everything that we have is because of Him, because He first gave it to us. Um, and then uh, that I may center myself on him as the purpose of all. That my life, like all the goings on, all the things in my life, all the things that I take part in, all of my, my responsibilities, all the things that, that I have and do, and, and, and that it's all because of him. That he is the reason for everything. And that I should never forget that, that I should keep my focus on him. So... Our word for today was humility. Um, our traditional definition is, um, you know, that you'll be humble, the, the, the state of being humble. It is the modest opinion or estimate of one's own importance. The biblical definition from our Bible dictionary was the personal quality of being free from arrogance and pride and having an accurate estimate of one's worth. Um, the Hebrew word was anava, which I know I'm probably saying it wrong. To occupy your God-given space in the world, it's also associated with fearing God. With and that it also the Bible talks about that um, the fear of the Lord and humility comes before wisdom. So, being in a state of humility will um, bring us 
wisdom from God. Um, the Greek word tapinu, I don't know if I'm saying that right, T-A-P-I-N-O-O, -O, to make low, uh, once again, a modest opinion of oneself. Um, so putting others first, putting God first, um, remembering that, that we exist because of God. Um, the verse that I chose to write was from Deuteronomy 8, 23, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not, that, um, that he will see into me and that he will make me right and make my path straight and help me to stay focused on him. Um, and then my application for me is that I should humble myself before God, um, my creator who gives and takes away that I may center myself on him as he is the purpose of all. Okay, so that is our verse mapping of the word humility. And like I said, this printable will be available for you guys so that you can do your own verse mapping. Okay, now, I already started cutting this up earlier. I got ahead of myself. I am going to trim our verse comparison printable down. This is like super, super simple also, okay? So, So let's take this one in. Oops. Sorry. Very long hair. And every once in a while, I have a dog who also has a lot of hair. Every once in a while, a hair will just like float or get stuck in something and it's sticky. Gross. Okay. So this is also very, very simplistic and simple. Okay, so these boxes are for colors. So you're gonna highlight. So I'm gonna choose two colors I'd like to use today. So let's go with, let me look at my outliners. Let's go with a green and a, <laughs> A green and a pink okay so the similarities I'm going to highlight in pink so that's what this box is for is to color in with your highlighter and we'll do our differences in green oops I got out of the line oh no and I was gonna drive some of you crazy. Okay, so we have our highlighters. I have such a mess. All right, and we are going to choose a verse. And I'm gonna, again, choose one of my verses from, I actually just started and there was a verse I was thinking of. Um, October is trust. Um, which verse was it? it was this age old proverb the trust in the Lord with all your heart I do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight so I'm just gonna I'm gonna use black for all of these okay because we're going to be highlighting all right Let's see do I have my black le pen is the question I think I only have a Okay, yeah, I think I'm just gonna use a regular pen. All right, so first you're gonna do a word for word translation. So I'm gonna pull up a graphic. Um, pretty simple. You were going to write out the verse um, in a word-for-word -word, um, translation. We're going to write out the verse in a, from a thought-to-thought -thought translation. We're going to write the verse in a paraphrase and then just pick one additional that is your choice. 
So let's look at them. So first, let's write out our verse up here at the top. So maybe I'll use a prettier pen. Let's use this green. So we are going to do Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. 5 and 6. Okay? And I'm going to pull up a graphic for you guys that shows you Bible translation chart. See if we can find one that's a good chart for you guys. All right, here's a good one. It's on godsword.org. Okay, so word-for-word -word translations are going to be NASB, ESV, KJV, NKJV, and TRB. I don't know what TRB is. <coughs> and then we have thought for thought, thought for thought, blah, blah, blah. thought for thought translations. All right, the TRB is the readable Bible. I have never heard of that. Have y'all heard of that? And then thought for thought would be like NLT, NIV. Um, and then a paraphrase would be like the message. Okay, so I have, I'm pretty sure, I have the ESV. So we are going to look at this verse in our ESV Bible, which is a word-for-word -word translation. So let's go to Proverbs. Three, five, and six, and we're gonna write out the verse. So Proverbs three, five, and six. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths oops got ahead of myself he will make straight your paths like i must be thinking of like maybe the niv maybe has path straight or maybe the kj you know the nkjv does make Let's see and he will make straight I like added an N in there. That's hilarious. Straight your pass. Okay. And sorry, I like totally killed straight. I don't know why. See if we can take out that N. Okay. Not the most beautiful, but okay. And now we're going to look up it in NIV. Let's just go with NIV. I think that'll be easy peasy lemon squeeze. I thought I had enduring word up already, but I guess I don't. Enduring word. Actually, let's just go to Bible gateway because I don't need the... All right, we already have NIV up. Proverbs. All right, 
five and six. Oh, and I'm gonna write for myself what the translation was right here. Um, e S V and we'll highlight that using where's the marker I used to write Proverbs. Where'd it go? I think I'll put it back in. All right. So that one was ESV. All right, this one is going to be NIV. Okay. All right, so NIV trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit, that's a new word, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. I don't even think I explained to you guys the differences. So the word for word are more literal. It's going to be your literal translations, like your NASB, ESV, that sort of thing. And they're the KJV. It's going to be literally like, they translate almost exactly like word for word. So they look at the Hebrew word and translate the English, the Greek word. Thought for thought is that they're looking at phrases. So they're going to look at the Greek phrase for trust in the Lord and how do we translate that phrase or that thought. Um, and I'll paraphrase is truly like, it's not going to be like an accurate translation. It's like an easier to read rewriting of the emotion that the, the the scripture is trying to convey. So the easiest one to look it up in is going to be just the message. So let's just go to the message. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's see. Search. Is it going? Go. Okay, there we go. All right. So it's not gonna be an exact translation. So we're gonna go with where we feel like it stops. All right, and I'm gonna write that here. Message. Okay. I might make some tweaks to this before I upload it. <laughs> I might give you guys a spot to write the verse that we're comparing, and then maybe I'll like put a little like, what is it? on the side for you guys, like add a little bit more detail to this printable before I upload it for you guys. All right, let's try our best to write where we think these two verses are in the message. So trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do everywhere you 
go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Okay, I feel like that's the closest. All right, now let's look at, let's pick one more translation to look at. Just choose it on our own. All right, so maybe let's go somewhere in the middle. What is GW, God's Word Translation? All right, let's see. So we've got NKJV. Um, let's see what um, KJV does with it. Let's see. We'll do the NKJV, though. Let's do the New King James Version. Search. All right. We'll do NKJV. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Hmm. Okay. All right, so now that we have all four of our Bible translations that we decided to write, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our highlighters and we're gonna look at all the ways that these verses are similar, okay? So we're gonna highlight those in pink. So how are they similar? Uh, let's see, I feel like trust in the Lord is similar. This one says trust in the Lord and this one says trust in the Lord. I'm gonna highlight trust here, but it changes the word to God, which I'm a, it technically it's the same, but it is a different word. All right, with all your heart, or it's also gonna be the same. With all your heart, with all your heart. Um, I'm gonna say your heart is the same in message, and with all your heart is the same. Let's see, do not lean on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. Yeah, all of these are, I might just highlight the lean on your own understanding part. The one that's gonna be different here is going to be Obviously, don't try to figure everything out on your own. It's going to be different there, okay? All right, so the next parts are going to be, in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, submit to him. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Okay, so in all your ways is going to be the same. In all your ways, in all your ways, in all your ways, acknowledge, these two are acknowledged, but I'm going to highlight them as different, submit, okay? And then listen for God's voice in everything you do. It's going to be different. All right. That everywhere you go is going to be different. 
obviously, in the paraphrase, and he's the one who will keep you on track. So most of the message is gonna be different. Um, him, him, him. And he will make straight your paths, and he will make your paths straight. All right, so I'm saying straight your paths is gonna be the same. Your path straight. And I'm gonna put your paths. But in this one, it's he shall direct. All right, so I feel like what's really jumping out at me but in all of them is that all of them say trust Lord, trust the Lord, trust trust God, but same thing. Trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord. So it's very, very important. I feel like that, that, that emphasis on trusting with everything inside of you, because they also all, including the paraphrase, have the word heart. So we are trusting God with everything that's inside of us, with our entire heart. Okay. Um, now this is where, uh, the obviously the message like kind of goes off on its own don't try to figure out everything on your own listen for god's voice in everything you do everywhere you go he's the one who'll keep you on track um i liked kind of how the niv said submit all of the others said that we acknowledge him which is good that's fine but i really feel like there's a difference between like i feel like saying acknowledge is just like like oh yeah i'm aware I'm aware God's there. I feel like it doesn't, I feel like saying submit is just like a stronger word. So I definitely, definitely liked how it used submit in NIV. Um, and then the other thing was that uh, both the, our word for, and thought for the, both ESV and NIV both said um, straight pass or pass straight. Um, and that uh, in the NKJV, which is also a word for word, it said that he will direct your paths. Um, so, I mean, I like both. Um, our path straight just means that the path is is obvious. Um, I do like the idea of the director path because if we come, come, come at it from like an analogy kind of situation, I feel like life is not a straight path, that life is going to have twists and turns and hills and valleys and all these things. Um, but thinking of it as that he will direct your path, that he will direct you where he, where you were meant to go, even if it's like a sudden left turn, you know, or a sudden zigzag or like a up or a down or whatever. And like I said, I'm using this as like an analogy. Um, but I do like the idea of directing the path, um, just because, uh, it kind of like, emphasizes that when we trust in God and with all that is within us and we lean on him and not ourselves and we submit to him that he will direct us where we are meant to go. So I'm kind of like, and that's kind of like the purpose of the verse comparison is that we are looking at it in multiple different ways. I'm um, thinking about how the words are being used. And then I can also kind of uh, dig in deeper. So like I said, we have acknowledge, submit, and acknowledge. And we also have straight pass, straight pass, and direct your paths. So those might won't be word studies that we might wanna do. So I might want to do one of these on um, acknowledge or submit and look at the, the Hebrew word for that because we're talking about the Old Testament. What is the Hebrew word for that's in this Bible? Because these, this is a word for word and technically NKJV is a word for word. So. I think that the word for word is going to be more of acknowledge, is gonna be closer to that translation. But the thought for thought said in all your ways, submit to him. So when they were looking at this whole thought, this whole phrase right here, they translated it as submit in the NIV. So I just found that really interesting. So it just kind of gives you insight into how the translations were done. Um, and then it might give you insight to also know like, okay, I want to dig deeper on what this Hebrew word for acknowledge is and think about what that means. 
um, and it'll just give you a deeper understanding of what God is saying in that verse. So that's why I use the verse comparison printable. Like I said, I think I'm going to do a couple of tweaks to it before I put it on Etsy. I think I'm going to give you a space to put your verse up here. And then I'm also going to give you a space so you can write what translation you used as well. Okay. Um, but that's the purpose of the verse comparison and our word mapping um, slash word study, if you want to call it that as well. Um, but yeah, so I hope that you guys got something out of our word mapping, word study on humility, and our verse comparison on Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and that these uh, study tools help you in your personal Bible study. Um, let me know uh, if you guys do word studies, what words has God laid on your heart or what verses has God laid on your heart recently? How has God been speaking to you? Definitely let me know in the comment section below. Okay, guys, and thank you so much for watching. We do a lot of Bible study content here, so if you love all things Bible study, then definitely hit that subscribe button. If you like this particular one on our word mapping and our verse comparison, then definitely hit that like button as well. And yeah, uh, we would love to welcome you to this um, family of believers who are diving into God's word, so um, definitely consider hitting subscribe. All right, y'all, uh, don't forget that God has not forgotten you. He has not forsaken you. He's there. He's been waiting. And um, we are in this together. So let me know how I can pray for you in the comment section below. And I can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Have an amazing week. Um, I'll be thinking of you. Okay, guys. Bye.